We can do that with Karana tools alone, without the help of Photoshop. The contrast parameter is not the only way to achieve the, the right contrast. We can also use curves. And finally, we need to make our image sharper and maybe also add a bit of a vignette effect. The reference doesn't have this effect, but I'll show you how it's done. Hi guys and welcome back to Render Courses. This is the final video on interior setup and Karana. Now, if you're working in V-Ray, be sure to see the next video. And in this lesson, we're gonna do the final render and also we'll do some post editing. All right, so what should we do before we start the render? First, let's go to render setup and set the threshold limit for our render. This is essential because upon reaching this limit, the render will stop. For interiors, I recommend using noise level limit. And I think for 4% uh, will do just fine. And by the way, in the last material setup video, I forgot to add a class. So let's do it now. Let's create Karana physical MTL. But this time we're gonna uh, use a preset. So we select glass from the list here and check thin shell. And we'll assign this material to our glass object. And so next we put the glass in place like this. To create realistic reflections, we need to give thickness to the object. So this is where shell modifier comes in handy. Outer amount is one millimeter. That's enough. All right. Now our noise limit stands at 4%. And once our render reaches 4% noise limit, it will stop. The rest of the settings are set to default. And so next we make sure that the active camera is Karana camera one. And that's pretty much it. Uh, it's pretty easy. So uh, we hit render to start the final, the final render. And I think it will take about seven or eight minutes. Uh, and I'm going to pause the video and then we'll come back to you with the uh, finished render. So we're currently at rendering pass three. While the render is running, I'd like to invite you to join our comprehensive training course that deals with all ins and outs of professional architectural visualization. And hundreds of students have already completed our course and made renders that you see on the screen right now. And if you also want to learn how to create such amazing renders, be sure to sign up for our course. Click the link in the description and we'll see you there. So we're already at rendering pass eight. Let's take a look at the stats. Noise level is currently at 10. I'm gonna pause the video and wait for the render to complete. And then we're gonna do color correction. All right, it's finished. Um, I have a high performance computer, so this scene took about five minutes to render. And next we need to do the final color correction, the final image has clear details. We can see all the materials. Noise level is rather low. The image is high quality. And now we need to bring it closer to our reference in terms of brightness and 
contrast. We can do that with Karana tools alone, without the help of Photoshop. We have this Post tab here. There it is. So let's collapse 3D Max so that we have the reference before our eyes. This is how we arrange our windows. We have several tools at our disposal. And for instance, there's contrast. There's also simple exposure that we can use to make the image lighter. The reference image is slightly colder. So this probably means that we should reduce white balance just a little bit. The contrast parameter is not the only way to achieve the, the right contrast. We can also use curves. So we click the plus icon and select curves. There we go. And then we expand the settings menu and head over to curve editor. Curves are actually a great way to tone an image. But first let's reduce the contrast to make the, the shadows darker. like in the reference. So to achieve contrast, we can create an S-shaped curve, kind of. So we place a point here in the, uh, in the center and give a slight bend to the upper part of the curve to make the highlights more intense. Let's reduce exposure as well. To make shadows here darker, we lower this part of the curve. Now we can see that the image has become more contrasting. But darker spots such as the lamp and the phases have become darker too. So let's shift the curve a little more. And we'll do this by adjusting the curve. We're looking for the right contrast. Now, next, to get rid of this light rosy shade, uh, we should adjust a different curve. So we pick red from the list and turn down the red color and, and the shadowy spots. I think that'll work. So you can edit the curve till you're happy with the result. And finally, we need to make our image sharper and maybe also add a bit of a vignette effect. The reference doesn't have this effect, but I'll show you how it's done. We click the plus icon and select vignette. Uh, it's a vignette effect like the one we see in photographs pretty often. So. As we increase this value, the corners become darker. All right, now let's adjust the sharpness parameter. We, we check sharpening uh, slash blurring and expand this setting menu. And we need to find the right values for these two parameters, sharpen amount and sharpen radius. So let's set sharpen amount to two and sharpen radius to one. This is enough, I think. So if you don't like the idea of using the curves, uh, you can use luck for some additional color correction. And this is how you do this. Click this plus icon and add LUT. And here you'll find the preset color correction settings that imitate various films. For example, Advantix or 
Futura. If the LUT value is too high, you can reduce the opacity parameter until you like how the image looks. So let's set it to 0.3, for example. And this is how you achieve a delicate color correction. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining our mini course. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow the updates. I also invite you to sign up for our big training course. See you in the next lessons. Bye.